Welcome to this Archivematica 1.8 screencast, where I'll be showing you improvements to Archivematica's integrations with two different access systems, Atom and Binder. Atom is an open source application for managing archival descriptions and making them available to the public. DIPs from Archivematica can be uploaded to Atom in order to provide access to digital materials. Binder is also an open source application and is used alongside TMS to support the care, management, and preservation of complex digital collections such as time-based media and born digital artworks. Digital artwork or supporting technologies can be preserved through Archivematica and then uploaded to Binder for access. Today we'll be looking at a new feature in Archivematica 1.8, the Access System ID box, which helps to demonstrate the integration between Archivematica and these two access systems. Then I'll demonstrate how to use the Access System ID box to upload materials to Atom and to Binder. Before we begin, a big thank you to Tate for sponsoring this Access System integration improvement. The Access section in the Archivematica documentation contains more information on the Atom and Binder integrations. Head to archivematica.org, select the 1.8 documentation, and look for Access in the user manual. In previous versions of Archivematica, users had to enter either the Atom slug or Binder artwork or supporting technology record ID at the moment of DIP upload. This meant that users had to set up their transfer, let it process, and then return once a DIP had been generated to enter the access system ID. As of 1.8, the Archivematica dashboard's transfer area now contains a box called access system ID. In this box, you can enter either the Atom slug or the artwork or technology record ID from Binder. Archivematica will then use the ID to send your DIP to the appropriate location. So first, let's look at uploading a DIP to Atom using the Access System ID box. First, let's check to make sure that our processing configuration is set up correctly. Once we start the transfer, we want everything to be automated, including DIP upload. In the default processing configuration, I'm going to set Normalize to normalize for access for the purposes of this demonstration. This will normalize our files and create a DIP. And I'll set upload DIP down near the bottom to upload DIP to Atom slash binder. And finally, I'm going to set store DIP to do not store. So let's set up our transfer. We're going to be doing a standard transfer and we will call it upload Atom demo. From the transfer browser in our sample transfers, I'm going to select this demo transfer CSV and add it to our transfer. The final thing we need to do here is populate the access system ID box. To do that, we need a slug from Atom. So this Archivematica pipeline is currently connected to our test Atom site. I've created a description in our Atom site where we can upload our DIP materials. All we need to do is grab the slug from the URL, which is the part after the site name, after the slash. So we'll copy this and paste it into the access system ID box. And now we're ready to start our transfer. The transfer will take a few minutes to initialize, but other than clicking start, we won't need to provide any user input at all in order to store our ape and upload our DIP to Atom. So this new feature, along with other user interface improvements, is a real benefit to users who want to operate in a mostly automated environment. In previous versions of Archivematica, if you wanted to upload a DIP to Atom or Binder, you would have had to wait for the ingest to stop at the upload DIP microservice and then enter either the Atom slug or the binder ID at that point. So our material has nearly finished transferring. Um, we've gone through all of the regular microservices that you should be familiar with in Archivematica. And the last thing it has done is created a SIP from our transfer so we can move along to the ingest tab um, to check on the microservices there. Archivematica is currently normalizing our files you can see in the list of jobs that Archivematica has normalized our files for access, which means that a DIP is being created.
If you're interested in other UI improvements that we've made in Archivematica 1.8, we've also made a screencast on general UI enhancements. There's a link to that screencast in the description below this video. So the Upload DIP microservice has automatically started to upload our material to Atom, um, and it has now completed successfully. So if we switch back to Atom and refresh this page, we can see that our digital objects are now available in Atom, <clears throat> along with, if we click on one of them, in this transfer we had CSV metadata included with our objects that we were uploading to Atom, so the CSV metadata has been uploaded as well. At the bottom of this screen, we have some digital object metadata, including the object UUID and ape UUID so that if we ever need to retrieve the originals of this material, we have the unique universal identifiers to locate that material. Back in Archivematica, the APE has been stored and processing is complete. We can check on the archival storage tab and see that our APE has been stored and we didn't need to make any uh, intervention to make this happen. Now let's upload some materials to Binder. Here we have another Archivematica pipeline. I've set up the processing configuration the same way that we set it up for the Atom demonstration so that everything is automated. And here's our binder site. We're going to be uploading our materials to an artwork record. So we'll navigate to artwork records and select a record. If I scroll down to the list of apes, you can see that seven apes have already been uploaded to this artwork record. We use the site for testing, so there's a lot of um, material in here from, from those actions. We can upload as many apes as we need to an artwork record, as an artwork may have many components or versions um, or supporting technologies that we want to connect to the artwork here in Binder to make it accessible. So we need to make a note of the artworks, artwork records Dublin Core identifier. If we look in the Dublin Core metadata field, we can see the identifier here is 2. Now in Archivematica, we can set up our transfer to Binder. Similar to the Atom transfer, we will select the demo transfer, the demo CSV transfer. And we can give our transfer a name. And in the access system ID field, we will enter AR to indicate that we are uploading to an artwork record, followed by a colon and then the identifier number, which was two. We can now start the transfer. And as we saw in the Atom workflow, we don't need to provide any other user input for this transfer um, for the ape to be uploaded, the dip to be uploaded to Binder. Uh, we can also upload dips to Binder supporting technology records, which is ideal if you're preserving the software systems that are required to display or access your digital objects being preserved. To upload an ape to a supported technology record, you would use the prefix TR instead of AR in the access system ID box and the identifier of the supporting technology record. So now that the transfer is complete, uh, we can switch over to the ingest tab and see how the ingest is going. Archivematica is currently normalizing for access. It's going through the various usual microservices um, that all Archimatica uh, apes go through. Now the dip is being prepared so that it can be uploaded to Binder. The upload microservice is taking place. We elected not to store the dip in this case. Because the material is being uploaded to Binder, uh, we have no need to also store that dip separately. Um, this is a, a choice that institutions can make on an individual basis, um, but for this purpose, we don't need to store that dip as well. So it looks like everything uh, was completed successfully in the upload dip microservice. And if we go back to Binder and refresh this page, 
and then scroll back down to that ape section, we can see that there are now eight apes stored in here in Binder. Um, it's kind of hard to tell which uh, which material came from which ape because we named I named all the test apes the same as the one we did today, um, including two that have identical ape names. Um, but if we click into a record, we can get a little more information about our ape here. We can also play, uh, since this is audio material, we can play it here in Binder and, and download the material if we want to. And again, if we go into the archival storage tab, we can see that our ape from today has been stored without any manual intervention from us. Thank you so much for watching. For more information about Archivematica, you can always head to archivematica.org for documentation, news, and information about what the Archivematica community is up to.